What's up everybody? And today we're going to Kapalua Plantation Course. You just saw the flag. You go out there, you get one of these, a bag tag. Look at this. I got a Ziploc bag, not of loud, but of golf tees, the pencil. You get some ball markers that are butterflies. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. Today I'm going to be giving you my review of Kapalua Plantation. Spoiler alert, it's awesome. I'm going to talk you through the process of it. I'm also going to link my friend Double, ba Double Bogey Bass. For some reason, I struggle to say his name, but it's a good name. Uh, he did a full vlog. I just didn't care enough to do a full vlog. So I'm going to show you the course, give you my opinions, and this is week two of my Hawaii vacation. So let's get into it. So Kapalua Plantation Course is not unlike many great golf courses in the United States or the world. It is the living embodiment of a museum. When you play this course, it is an institution on the PGA Tour, but for me as, I wouldn't say a deep golf architecture nerd, but I really appreciate great design, or I believe I appreciate great design. And this to me is the the landmark piece of the core Crenshaw design firm, which now has become an institution in great luxury golf resorts. What really struck me as a, a big aspect of this golf course was there's typically two ways to play a hole. You can take on a lot of risk and go for possibly a low number. And as you see on the PGA tour, if the wind is not blowing, it's a pretty easy course for the pros because they can use their distance to kind of manhandle the course. It does not play as long as it does on the scorecard. There's a lot of undulation, hills, as you'll see in the video footage. You can actually manhandle this course even if you're a short hitter because you can get a lot of run and the course plays pretty forgiving, uh, more than I expected actually. That being said, if you're not the strongest hitter, you can actually top the ball and still get 170 yards on some holes because you'll just hit a down slope and it'll keep it going. And the forced carries, there's typically another option as opposed to the forced carry. So there's different ways to play different holes, which is, I think, kind of the, in my opinion, the, the ability of genius in golf architecture where you can create a great golf course for a high-level player and an entry level player and they both can find the course playable and enjoyable that's something that's great to me bermuda greens the greens were very 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 fast and yet if you go into the grain they're very slow so that's but these were the fastest greens some of the fastest greens i've ever played they're almost as fast as pinehurst so they were pretty legendarily fast and they might be even faster because i played it in wet conditions so very, very fun in that regard. Once again, I will throw up the rate on the screen right now so you can see how much it costs to play this course. Could give you sticker shock, but you're pay you're playing, but you are paying to play where the pros play. You're paying to play the course that started the core Crenshaw revolution. So unless you're really wealthy, you're probably not going to play this a bunch of times. But if you love the game of golf and you appreciate stepping on these type of courses and experiencing these type of challenges, more than likely you are that person because you're watching this channel, a niche channel to just kind of show you golf courses while you're at your job, probably it's worth it. It's worth it for that experience. Now it's up to you how many times it's worth it. But I think for everyone, it's an, a unique experience for me, it's in the top 10 of United States golf courses I've played. Would I put it above Pebble or Pinehurst number two, which are kind of like my gold standards of great courses that I've played in the United States? No, but when playing this course, I realized why those are my gold standards. And it's not just because they're famous, especially with Pinehurst number two. I compare all great golf courses to Pinehurst number two, which to me now is that's why it's my gold standard along with Pebble. When I played this course, I go, how does it stack up to Pinehurst? How does it stack up to Pebble? That's the mark of a great golf course. Kapalua to me is so far the best version of a resort golf course I have ever played. Big wide fairways, great challenge, scorable if you can hit the ball well. And 
it never feels redundant or repetitive. The slope in real life and the undulation change is so much more rewarding than you would expect. And what I also like is in Hawaii golf and sometimes Palm Springs golf, it feels like a bulldozer just comes through and takes away the environment and it's just a flat golf course or a resort golf course put next to the ocean. This course really feels like it was molded into the land. It was crafted out of the turf and the the way that the land used to sit before the golf course was. And that just led to such a pleasant experience because it felt as though I was actually exploring this piece of property rather than a piece of property was crafted for my enjoyment of a golf game. I'm not sure if I expressed that well, but that is how I feel. Let's go into the golf footage and then I'll ramble afterwards. So here's the driving range. It's down over by the 10th tee, so it's on the other side of the loop. And I'm gonna give you the tour that you go back up, and this is the tropical vibe of plantation course. Very much uh, feels like you're kinda in a jungle or you're in your own different world. This is tee box number one. If you look there, it's just a wide open fairway. Whoa, I'm tripping. And then this is the practice green where I did a terrible job of that, but they actually had some really good slope. And this first hole is probably one of the hardest holes in the course. I totally, if you want to know, I hit it into that junk. And then I probably lied and said I did way better than I did, which is a super sick move. You should do it too. Bunch of strategic bunkers. But if you look also, there's slope to it. I think that's Let's hole number nine two. Cut from right this is here. hole number three. I actually we'll carried a shot in there. I wish I had a vlogged it. It was so good. Hole number four right here. That's where the pros tee off from. That was like, oh, pros tee off. But there's also a level of blind shots you have to hit at this course, which is also a bit jarring for me as well because I'm like, oh, wow, blind shots. I'm not as familiar with doing that. This par five is a par four for the pros. It's totally a par five for me. It also has a great look at some of the views of this property. So it's just kind of a neat thing to look at. Uh, totally got there and missed that birdie putt, but I was super proud of it. Look at how you can look at the different angles you can play into this hole. This is a super hard hole. It played into the wind on this given day. It was raining and all that stuff, but there's this down slope, and I actually hit it over the green because I had no clue what I was hitting. This is the down slope, and then you play to that green. Way harder hole than I thought on television. This par three, you always see it on the television coverage with the water behind, nice force carry. Pretty pretty sizable shot, to be honest, and the greens are very, very tricky. This is, this is uh, the back view of that hole, which is, you know. I, I just love these views and this these optics. Oh man, we're going in raw right here. So this is my birdie putt on this hole. So this is going to be a fun one. You're going to get a live golf. This is a Lukey, like I'm on the tour. Look at the shirt open by the, the youngster. Love that I got the shirt open. That's a good, that's a good hole. I got the Aloha spirit. Hit a comment, hit a like button. If you think I'm looking a little thick boy, if I'm looking like I've been hitting some weights, that would make me feel good. Kind of just giving you the raw home video footage right here, but it's okay. I think everyone will survive. And this will show you how tricky the greens are. I cannot read Bermuda greens. I thought that was going to turn. It totally didn't. I was also very scared. Let's see if I finish this out or if I'm dishonest and I didn't do it. Okay, made it. So that's a par. And that is how we're living. And then there I am. I'm like, hey, let me pick up the phone and go for a walk. Unpopular opinion, but I think it's true. I think the back nine is actually a lot easier than the front nine. I think the front nine is actually a lot harder. Um, this 10th hole was like wide open. 11 just has this awesome backdrop of the ocean. 12, I thought I could drive it. I totally couldn't, but I put it down there right before a front bunker. It's also important to know if you play this on a warm day, you have a real chance of just playing pinball and just hitting the ball wherever. You could hit your longest drive. That's where I had my third shot on this hole. As you can see, a little Irish sunshine. Oh, we got the Lukey Gonzo cam coming out. Let's see how this goes. I think my camera tips over, but um, this is just the vibes here. And you can kind of tell when you look down just how well maintained that, like the green is. Like these are just awesome greens. You can definitely tell that I'm a, can we note, can I get a like someone in the comments section giving me props for wearing a short sleeve shirt in a Hawaiian rainstorm and I didn't make it so we'll just cut it right there.
Another theme of this back nine, as you can see, really wide open fairways, but then the bunkers are strategically placed. So if you veer off, you can hit a bunker. Just love the way this hole sit right here. So I just wanted to get film this and show kind of like the lovely nature of it. This is the famous par five, or at least famous to me, where everyone goes for it in two, but you have to hit a slice around that corner. It just looks amazing. And that's like the theme of this course is how happy it makes me just feel um, hitting golf shots at this course. And I think that's a big takeaway for this course for me is I just didn't genuinely enjoyed hitting the golf shots and playing these shots in person. And it's like, I was so present and so happy experiencing it. This hole, the 17th, very tough, but there's tons of room to miss. And it's just, if you really can ever get the chance to play this course, it really is worth it because it's just a fantastic experience. And I'm not even getting paid to say that. This is 18, this is the signature hole. You hit it down there and then you go all the way down the hill. And if I hit a great drive, probably a toe hook that went in the air and it was really good. And just to be able to see this on television coverage and then come down this hill, it was a special moment for me just to experience that. Here are some of the photos I took as well because I'm gonna be obnoxious and treat this like a PowerPoint presentation of my trip. These are some of the views you get on this course and this speaks to just kind of why it's so special. So let's get my final thoughts now. So for me, my final thoughts are this is a top 10 golf course in the United States. I've got to play Whistling Straits. I got to play Kiowa Island. Maybe if it's my birthday, I'd risk spending a lot of money on Shadow Creek. Leave a comment if you want me to do that because that definitely is going to set me back a lot of money if I did that and I need people to incentivize me to want to spend that much money. Uh, but this is up there for me, at least. I, I like. I would much rather play this course than Bethpage Black, even though I've never played Bethpage Black, unless my guy Ron Katz, great boxing matchmaker, was with me. Because, I mean, I just don't think that course is... I think that course is too hard for me. So, I think that... I was reading Jeff Shackelford's book about golf architecture, and I really agree that Oftentimes we look at like, oh my God, what does a five handicapper think of this golf course? I think what does an 18 handicapper think of a golf course is just as valid as what does a five handicapper think? I think that we often look at the best players in the world and the hardest courses and go, that's the best one because we're kind of insecure and it makes us feel better. Kapalua Plantation is true genius when it comes to golf design because it appeals to so many different players. The one downside for me is the price point because it's like this course and courses like Royal Port Rush that I've gotten to play. Man, do I wish that I could have another crack at them. And it feels like it takes like years upon years to get yourself ready to spend the money again unless I had a home over there. And that's the true shame is it feels like because this course is so successful and so coveted, it's not as accessible as maybe it should be for the experience it is. But that, that's what happens when you have a great course and the management and the property and the superintendent do a fantastic job. It's so coveted, they can charge what they want. So that's just what happens when you're successful. But I can't rave enough about this course. This was one of the best courses I've ever played. And it really reminded me of Edgewood in Lake Tahoe. 